to meet you, George. Nice to meet you. So, have you played Macmillan Fest before? Uh, I have. So, Chris is actually already a friend of mine. Uh, I was one of the best men in his wedding, actually. Uh, and across the ten years, I've played under many different guises. So. Mel Van Little Bribes played the Rock City stage, um, not Rock City basement, not Rock City. Uh, Mel Van Open to Fire played, and I played under, I used to have like an alias called Twicky, that was like one of the first years. Um, this, this is actually my first year playing as me. Oh yeah. Yeah, so it was kind of a nice send out for me, like a bit of closure. Have you done a lot of festivals? Yeah, so I've done um, Beat the Streets, Dot to Dot, Hot Well, I can't do Hot Creek Hustle this year because I'm away, but foolishly I've done it. Um, put a bit like a mug, but um, yeah, um, it's just such a, a vibrant music scene and like everyone kind of pulls in with each other and everyone supports each other as well. And it's, it's fantastic to be a part of it as well. What's your favourite festival you've played so far? Oh. Uh, my favourite festival memory recently probably beat the streets this year. I played um, I played the night before in Newark with my good friends Fade and Blonde, Left Hand Lane and Morton Pierce Wright uh, and I just got absolutely trashed and the day after I had like a solo thing at the Vega and it, the worst thing that happened was it packed out and I was like this, I don't want this one to pack out, like what are you all doing here? And it was just me there, like trying to hit all these high notes, like. Ah! But I think I think people kind of took it in stride as well. They could tell, like, the powering for me, or like you can do it. So you described the music as folk folk. How do you folk? How do you combine the two together? Um, I mean, it's just playing folk music, just fast. Yeah. A lot of my influences are like Bruce Springsteen, Frank Turner, um, and it's kind of trying not to copy what they do exactly because that's plagiarism, but just taking a bit of influence from them. Well, you've been praised by Frank Turner. Haven't I have, you? yeah. Who's the biggest person that's praised you like the most, got you the most excited? My mum. Always your mum. My mum said she was listening to my CD at the tip and. The guy asked her who it was, and she said, "I don't know." I'd, I'd say I think that's praise compared to um, probably Frank Turner. Though, like when I when I found out that all of that was happening, I was actually uh, I was actually in Italy on a train, and I was like, "Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god!" Like heart palpitations, like ah. Um, I've met him a few times over the years, and he's really quite a good bloke. What's your favourite venue in Nottingham that you play? Favourite venue in Nottingham? Uh, JT Saw is an incredible venue. Bodega, hopefully doing that. Gonna sell that for the second time again. Um, Rough Trade as well. Like um, Sam from Rough Trade is my best friend. Sam, if you're watching this, I hope you're best friends. <laughs> Please. Um, I don't think I have a least favourite venue, if that makes sense. I think all the venues have like their different quirks, like the yeah. Chameleon's are really cool, uh, all the Rock City venues, apart from I've never done main stage. One day. One day, one day. <laughs> then I'll retire. <laughs> You're playing the Dega, December, headlining. I'm really excited for that, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. How did you kick this court? Because you've got Velvet Blood. Parker and um, Kate Auburn. Yeah. So, Harker, I geek out over Harker. Like they're from, they're a punk band from Brighton that sound like a band called the Get Up Kids. Uh, and I actually listened to Harker a lot during university, and it actually came to be that we got to tour together and like we got on really well. Like I'm going to Mark's wedding next year. Like, it's, it's, I love them so much, and all four of them are just incredible people. Um, Kate actually supported me last time we headlined the Vega, and I was kind of thinking of a lineup, and I was like, well. Kate, like I, I don't feel like I can do it without Kate. Like she's she's always been a great sounding board. Like she's so supportive and she's incredible. Like she's a, she's actually Jake Rugg's second cousin. And in my mind, like she's much talented, than, yeah. much more talented than him. Like she writes these incredible songs, um, and it's criminal that she doesn't have that regard. Like um, and Velvet Blush, I had the pleasure of seeing them a couple of times this year, and I was like, these guys are like. Incredible. I didn't realise how young they were. I think they're like 17, 18. But like they're writing music that I wish that I wrote now. And I'm like, why? <laughs> what are some of your favourite artists to work with? Like, what shows together? 
Uh, I've got to say Buenos Treehouse um, because we did a year ago we did five gigs in a day with Buenos Treehouse um, and for some reason I was still powering through. Um, Fading Blondes were always really good to kind of hang around. Uh, we've done a few shows with them. So I've got gas from the water. Yes. I mean, I could just reel off like most of the Nottingham scenes. Yeah, um, I just saw Wilted Flower earlier. She's absolutely incredible. I've, I've never really played like a gig with her, mostly festivals, but I'd love to put her on at some point. Um, Dandelions. I, I love Daryl from the, well, I love them all from the Dandelions a lot, but Daryl in particular. Like, yeah, he, he was in a band called The Breakfast Club, and my uh, best friend slash guitarist Kieran was also in The Breakfast Club, and like, to me, that was like the peak of music. Like, if I supported The Breakfast Club, I'd made it, if that makes sense. And now I've got the guy from The Breakfast Club in my band, like, yeah. And I think we're best friends. Kieran, if <laughs> you're watching this. Best We're best friends. What's your favourite song to play live? Ooh, I think it changes. So I have two. So like my favourite song that I've ever written is probably Sycamore. Um, but I don't think that's my favourite to play live. I think my favourite to play live is probably Shaker Ghost because it's very like upbeat. Like you kind of get the crowd going a bit. Um, and I think that's the one that people respond to a lot more as well. If you could talk any artist, alive or dead, who would it be? Uh, Ducking Punches, Harker, George Gass. No, that <laughs> happened earlier this year. Maybe um, Bruce Springsteen, Frank Turner, uh, Phoebe Bridges is absolutely incredible. There's a band called Fresh, who are really good. I'd love to, they're, if you get a chance, listen to them. They've got two albums. It's like 40 minutes of your life to listen to both albums. Like they're just fantastic. Uh, the Get Up Kids, Blink 182, Alpine Trio, just list every band in existence. So. <laughs> You're crazy to the 60s. Yeah. Um, did you ever have any moments I'm where you were like... I'm 17 now. <laughs> Do you have any moments where you're like, oh, why am I doing this? I may as well just give up. I think the the worst part about being a musician is it is very detrimental to your mental health. Um, and you'll play a gig like the Bodega where you sell it out and it's like the best gig of your life. But the week after we did that, we played like a beer garden in Cockbrae and it, everything that could have gone wrong went wrong, like strings breaking, my voice going. Um, I think it's difficult. I think. I was doing it for about nine years and then I kind of started to push it a bit more, uh, whereas before it's a bit more casual. Um, and I feel like I've had such a great response from that as well, like everyone's really supportive. Um, as I mentioned, not in the music scene in particular, like everyone is like championing each other. Um, but yeah, I think there have been a lot of times over the years where I've been like, why am I doing this? Like. And for a solo artist, the running joke is like I'm breaking up with myself, and it's like you can't break up with yourself. <laughs> What's been the highlight of your year so far? The highlight of my year this year is probably 2000 Trees. Um, I played like a Frightened Rabbit cover set, so last year um, we sadly lost the lead singer from that band, um, sadly to his own life. And it was just really cool to have like this group of people like singing these songs back, like, and it, it kind of felt like. Uh, almost like a communion and I think that was just such a perfect tribute to like one of the greatest songwriters of all time. Sounds beautiful. Yeah. Where do you picture yourself in 10 years time? Uh, hopefully I'll get rid of this. <laughs> um, I don't know, in 10 years time I would have liked to have done an album by that point, I'd like to have put it out on record. Uh, I'd love to have done Rescue Rooms but 37 playing music, I don't... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that would be cool. Hey, it's always cool. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Um, I think I'd like to play music still in some degree, but I don't think that I'd be pushing it as much. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds very defeatist, doesn't it? <laughs> Even if I'm glad. Yeah. It, if it hasn't happened me, for, but if it hasn't happened for me by then, then uh, definitely. Thank you so much for. Sure. Thank you for having me. Long time.